November 20th, uh, 2021, regular select board meeting to order. We've got Brad Town, Flo Smith, John Quinn, and myself, Justin Lawrence, and Vince Conti here. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda, Vince? Uh, one typo I made on the uh, appointment for approval at the 615 time slot for Amanda Smith. It's not the public's work board, and the letter in your pamphlet is correct. It's the Planning Commission. Okay. Uh, that was on me. All right. Thank you. Public comment? Okay. Uh, hearing none, uh, Black Road discussion. Ken, Covey? Yeah. Right behind you. Okay. Uh, we'll start. It'll be a little lengthy. Start with the select October meeting of 2020. Uh, there was an agenda published by the town. On this town, there was no mention of Black Road or any changes there to uh, as far as traffic flow or allowing any unauthorized motor vehicles, namely four wheelers, snowmobiles on the road. It was not on the agenda in any way, nor were any of the residents warned. I want to make that very clear. From your minute of the October 5th meeting, it was brought up at the very tail end of the meeting by Mr. Lawrence, seconded by Mr. Quinn, and approved unanimously to allow snowmobiles, four wheelers, and so forth to use Black Road. It clearly states in Vermont law, uh, this is 19 BSA Chapter 7, holding hearings, giving 30-day notice to petitioners and town planning commissioners, view the highway in question, receive testimony from interested parties, and general board members should refrain from any discussion with parties except for clarification of facts on the issue. None of that was done. Zero. Let's continue on. After, again, from the meeting, October 5th, recorded in the Times Argus, I quote Mr. Quinn, I think it's a good place to start. We're going to, suggesting the allowable, uh, suggesting allowing use of town roads could prompt adjacent landowners to allow trails to cross in the use of their property. Sounds like a veiled threat to me. If you don't let us use the roads or use your property, we're going to let them use the roads. Let's move on a little further. March 17th, again, this is in the Times Argus. Conservation Board, they warned a meeting uh, or were chastised for not warning a meeting because they were under the opinion, apparently, in trying to block motorized traffic up over Darling Hill. And that did not meet with the select board's agenda, apparently. In fact, again, I quote Mr. Quinn, uh, the conservation board serves at the pleasure of the select board and needs to fall in line, basically. Which basically, again, basically, or is that what I said? That's that's what you said, according to the Times Argus. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Okay. We'll move on a little further. Sugar baking problem. Over on, up again, up on top of the hill. Conservation committee. Illegal tapping of trees. The conservation commission recommends and requests a fine of $19,000 against the Turkey Hill Farm for illegal tapping of trees on town property. Let's fast forward to the select committee. Snowmobile Club cuts unmarked trees on the same hill, the trail, again, Darling Hill. Uh, the only mention is the select committee is upset because the meetings in the conservation committee were not properly warned but they have no problem, apparently, according to the free press, with the cutting of trees and going outside the marked territory. Nothing, nothing more said about that. Let's move on a little further. Black Road, part of this class four, is a trail. Town resident, namely Josh Walker, put a log across his trail. 
I called Mr. Coney and complained because you're not supposed to block a class four row. In fact, I can read the Vermont stature on that as well. No person is allowed to block a class four row or any other trail. It is to be a fine of not more than a thousand dollars and it's court costs. I can read the exact paragraph if you'd like. I report this to Mr. Coney, the log's still in place. He's got no more right to block that trail than I do. I've also requested from Mr. Coney the exact rules and regulations for not only Darling Road, but for Black Road, for the Class 4 section. Yet to receive any, in fact, if any exist, neither Mr. Coney or anybody else seems to know where they are, even though it clearly states it, in order to change that, the town has to have it in writing and post it for anybody to come in and receive. Not there. How come? Uh, as far as the Bass Club, and, well, Bass and the Barry Thunder Chickens, being a $19,000 fine was applicable for tapping trees up on that hill. It seems to me a $19,000 fine at very minimum should be applicable to Bass and the Barry Thunder Chickens. They illegally cut property on town property or cut trees on town property and went outside the trail to do so. But yet nothing seems to be said about that. And I, I'm kind of a little concerned as to why this is happening. It seems to me that you know the select board has decided they want that trail through. Don't care who it hurts, don't care who object to that. We want the trail through for the select committee and a few of their good buddies on the bass. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, it seems to me the motion should be brought up to the floor both against Mr. Walker for illegally blocking that road, which his states can't do, against Vast for illegally cutting trees up there on town property, which they are not supposed to do. Uh, I know I don't have a fiddler's chance, and you know they are getting anything approved. But I'm hoping that people watching on Orca Media, or perhaps at times our guests, may have something to say about this as well. And I intend to pursue that, and I'm going to keep pushing it till the very end. Other than that, gentlemen, I got out of the hospital a couple of days ago. I feel like crap. I've said I, what I got to say, and I'm going home. Thank you, take it from there. Thank you for your time. I hope you feel better. Yep. Um, so with that, I think that some of the information doesn't really line up and it's not factual. Um, I think I think without a motion, I think you know we could have a quick discussion on maybe having Vince check into the timeline and yep. accuracy of the minutes and the comments made and yeah, not everything gets it's posted exactly right as we know and um, whether you know the I guess the one that concerns me the most is probably making sure it was worn correctly to begin with right the first one um, and and looking for the accuracy of that I mean the comments in the paper um, you know it is what it is um, and, and sometimes capture it out of context but I think it's important that we make sure that um, you know we're following the process correctly and I think as far as some of the comparisons with the trees, um, we, we all know that there's inaccurate to compare well, statements versus the, the tapping. I, yeah, I think I, I think there was, you know, you know, there may still be disagreement there, but I think there was um, a general agreement. understanding or agreement on what was being cut. And I don't know that it was, you know, fully recognized when we talked about it on, on both right. sides of the stories. So the uh, conservation committee wasn't there that night. Right. Um, you know, we didn't have a chance to question them about it. I don't think it was fair representation, but it is what it is. So if you agree, what I'll do is I'll start with the uh, October 5th, 2020 that he referred to. We kicked it off with. Yeah, I'll put a timeline of events together. I'll draft a letter 
I show would, to the board before we, we uh, I, would, I, would, I would actually, uh, I wouldn't rely on his October 5th timeline either. I would, I would maybe dig a little deeper and see. I feel like when we brought it up, I, 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 yeah, make sure that I, I can go I'll there. start there. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll go whichever way I need to to get, right? yeah, get to I a good baseline starting point. Yeah. Okay. Brad, do you have anything on that? Well, as I, when you and I talked that one time, I was I, I mentioned that I didn't think that the uh, that uh, black road had ever been included in the allowing snowmobiles on the road. It was even Pete Kelly was there was back when Pete Kelly was on the board, and he made a point that uh, that black road he thought was was. Uh, um, unacceptable as a snowmobile trail. He took in, um, we took in allowed snowmobiles from Shed Road, I believe it was Shed Road, or maybe it was, uh, uh, yeah, I think it was Shed Road to under the throughway onto your property. Right. And if I remember right, that was the only one we did approve. We also approved at one meeting the use of Black Road and Brookfield Road. Yeah, but the way it was worded, um, you'd have to look back at the look at the uh, uh, minute, uh, not the minutes, but the, the tape. And I the way the, the way the the way the motion was worded, I I I just listened to the tape. Okay. See what it says. See what it is. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. All right, else? Well, not. I just wanted to add that, as I recall, and I agree with listening to the tape, I also recall there were discussions almost as if it was a done deal before we were discussing it based on boards in the past. So, Vince, you may need to look back at some of the historical because there was a lot of reference to that, as I recall, and I think the Times Argus even published that as well. Okay. And we may need to refer some of this through legal counsel. I wasn't, but that's yeah. a down the road, you know, okay. if it comes to I wasn't on when Pete was on the board. No, no, that. that's I what I mean. Either. I don't have it. I just mean that there was some discussion with our board okay. and some articles in the Times Argus, one or more, okay. where they referenced almost as if the agreements were in the past and we were taking effect to something that already had been established. So we need to look into that a little further from my perspective. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, research. I think that would be great. All right. Uh, highway superintendent truck replacement discussion. Tim, what do we got? Come on up. <laughs> so, <laughs> two weeks ago, um, we brought one of our trucks up for maintenance, and um, Clark's um, said that uh, International is not taking any more um, purchase orders for the next year. They've already met their quota for 2022 to 2023. They, you know, I mean, due to everything that's going on in this world, they've set a number that they can make X amount of trucks, and uh, they've already met that. So, with that being said, Clark's purchased, I think he said nine or ten of them, for stock on their own. And then they kind of know, like, which towns are coming up for replacements. So they said that um, if we wanted to, he gave me a quote. I don't know if it's showed it to you guys or not. I don't have the quote in here. I have a quote. Um, so what it would be is contingent, if we signed a purchase and sales agreement, kind of with them, that it's contingent on that if it goes through the budget and votes through town meeting, it puts our name on one. So we wouldn't have to wait for 2023-24. So, what truck are we talking about? I was just going to ask, is it replacing 2015, one? 2015 uh, 
10 million. So when you're talking million. about in the FY23 budget, next year's budget? It would go in this fall's budget. To be right, for next on, year. So the FY23. And that was one, was that the one that was in rotation to be replaced anyway? Yes. It okay. was? Yeah. It's, the, it's at its 2015, so it's to that seven year mark. Yep. But that one was the one that was. Yeah, the five year, right? Yes, yeah, so it had a five year warranty. So that truck's been out of warranty for two years now. We dumped a bunch of money into it last year. Is it so having we, any issues right now? No, but we've been not running it as much using it the, we move the equipment with it it sits with the trailer so we move the excavator and stuff with it so because i put brand new tires on it last year so i didn't want to run them it'll yeah. be okay for this winter yes it's, you know what i mean unless it has some sort of well as from what we know right but i put brand new tires on it last year we ran through the winter and they're they're kind of a snow tire almost yeah. so they're kind of softer so mm -hmm. i been trying not to run it that much on the asphalt so the tires are still gonna right. make the longevity of the truck for the replacement so we won't know how much they're willing to give us for our truck until the last minute right yes I yeah I don't think but we'd lock in the price now yes it would be that we would we would get our name on a vehicle that they have coming in that will be delivered, I think he said sometime in the spring, to them, and then it would go to... Um, they, Fully outfitted? Yeah, they do everything through Viking now, so it'll be just, uh, when it's done and we're good, mm -hmm. we just drive one up there and drive the other one back. And you know what the increase in the price was over the last purchase? Yes, um, not to the T, yeah. but um, it was right around between I think eight and ten thousand from when the the last truck was purchased. How much do we know the truck? Do we have a reserve account for equipment? No, I started trying to. We don't. Uh, yeah, spend it on like a Mira Lake Road culvert. What I am going to work with him to put together on is uh, going forward is a five and a ten year equipment plan as well so we can see when things are due to be replaced yeah yeah, yeah. 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 i just to talked to diane the other day when she's yeah we you started know, working on that so busy with taxes and stuff like that we gotta sit down we can we can plan for budget purposes that way you know. stuff get that right. started and mm -hmm. well, I, I thought there was two hundred fifty thousand or two hundred thousand in our budget typically that we had in there yeah, i think it's closer to 50. it was usually for that but it always ends up you know, for equipment or <coughs> infrastructure stuff, we all think we ought to be chunking out yeah, right if I remember what Diane said earlier in the year. Yeah. Yep. For the greater. But that would that would be in this upcoming budget anyway, already right. made it So there's no vote or anything, right? This is just discussion. Yeah, mm -hmm. just discussion. Yeah. Okay. I think I think it's good if we stay on our replacement cycle. Keep um, the warranties on every and I think you know if, if it's the board's intention to Get a new truck next year and see the cycle. Then. Okay. I'll get the quote out to everybody and then we'll finalize everything and then we'll bring it to a vote. Right. Don't, we, okay. a yeah. Yeah. Don't we still need to do an RFP for a truck? Yeah. Okay. So it would be sent to multiple places? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll still go through the process. So yeah, yeah we'll, it'll, it'll go through all the. Mm -hmm. But from what I've been told, Everybody's in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you getting bringing so, us to us. Definitely. It's better to find out now that we can plan for it. Yeah. I mean, we're just able to have yeah, yeah, mechanical as issues as we, the one we have. So, I guess that's the way they've done it in the past. Was is it's they have it all pre-made. You know, everything mm -hmm. else. And then, anything else, Tim? Did you pass out the paving? We were going to talk about. That's later on. No, but later. Oh, all right. it's further down the list. A little bit further Sorry. down. We want to make sure you are with us for a hey, while. But, uh, we'll keep <laughs> you awake. Don't worry. All right. <coughs> Polymorphic proposal and LOI decision. We have a couple of gentlemen here to, to, to decision or questions. The proposal is in here you you as well. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Barth from Blind Marvin is Dan. Dan. Yeah. Um, you know, Dan's on the engineering team. Um, but yeah, we're, we're here to answer any questions on proposal, and I think we had a chance to demo events and how it works and everything. Um, uh, I think awesome. he, had, he had a chance to speak with Corey as well, who's using the St. Albans, and then we're just we're in town for onboarding we're doing with Fairfax Vermont. So. Yeah, I talked to uh, I did talk to the town of St. Albans for probably a half, good half an hour at least on this, and uh, he couldn't say enough good about it. Um, the things that he's done, he said, in ten weeks in the town, they've generated 512 records with their residents already in ten weeks' time. Using this, stop screwing up, and there won't be so many calls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think from an efficiency and, and gaining useful data. Um, it's a, going to be a powerful tool that we should consider. That's yeah, so this is a customer relationship management system that will help us it, it's, better. It's, tr it's also, they've also got the uh, the process. There's process management. Uh, management workflow well management there. That I think well. should consider. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's good. It's, again, it's something similar to what I've seen in previous life. And you guys said that this is free for the first five years? <laughs> <laughs> We, we are willing to offer a, I think we put it in the LOI, but a two month pilot. So that way there's a way for you to get it up and running and make sure everything's good. Um, we offer that to Fairfax and St. Helens. So. And that's 8000 roughly $3 per resident? Yep, for the first year. And yeah, $3 last $3 point. I think it's a number of documents. That was free for the first year, seriously. <laughs> yeah. You know what the discussion was the first time? Well, that's, I was the pilot, I was yeah. first year. Okay. For the first full year, not two months, right? First two months are free. Right. For the pilot period, and then the first year after that is, is three bucks a resident. Then fourth year, the no, second year is four dollars, and three to five is five dollars per resident, based on the latest census. So I would make a motion to have uh, Vince enter into contract negotiations with <laughs> Polymorphic uh, for the use of their uh, software product. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. I second that. I was just looking at a couple of different <laughs> um, Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. There you go, Brad. <laughs> Is there yeah. a delay or can you hear us okay? I keep hearing uh, chittles rattling around the table. <laughs> okay. Hungry. During dinner time. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'll just put this on mute. Perfect. Yeah. We, we think it's you. Uh, appointment approval request for Amanda Smith to the Planning Commission. Thank yes. you, gentlemen. Enjoy Thank you. your Thank evening. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Amanda is with us. She's online. Hi, Amanda. She's muted. Your phone is muted, Amanda, if you can hear us. While she's getting off mute, I would, I would just say that the percent increases from year two to year three. So I, we kind of work on all we of that. Negotiate that a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Dave. Hi, Dave. We've been waiting for you. Sure. Uh, Amanda, if you can hear us, your phone is still muted. Sorry. That's okay. No worries. Hi, Amanda. We've got you Hi. Twice. Thanks for joining us, Amanda. Yes, thank you. Um, so, Amanda, do you want to uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? She's of course. Um, I'm originally from Mississippi. I moved here about 24 years ago. Um, my husband and I live in Berlin, and. Um, we just finished building our house and I just finished getting my master's degree. So now I have the time to give. Um, and I also work uh, with Carla Newsel at the state. I've been with her for about 12 years and she's always encouraged me to 
apply when I can um, to help the town. And she said there was an opening for planning commission. So I jumped on it. So here I am. <laughs> oh, great. Well, thank Wonderful. you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Yes. What's your master's degree in? Uh, public administration and law and policy. All right. Yeah. I will make a motion to appoint uh, Amanda Smith to the Planning Commission. And I second. Any discussion? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> we haven't voted, oh, we haven't voted. We haven't voted yet, so we're going to have to hold <laughs> oh, okay, up before you get real excited, okay? <laughs> but we didn't make it to any discussion, so. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Yeah, thanks. I'm excited. Thank you. <laughs> uh, working in right away permit for Eustis Cable approval request. Make an approval uh, to allow Eustis Cable um, to work in the right of way to lay underground fiber. And I second that motion. Any discussion? Uh, Un underground CATV, excuse me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe let me sign. Yeah. And I think just just to expand on that a little bit, um, this is a company that was recently on Brookfield Road. Well, I guess it was last year. Um, they laid cable and fiber for a number of companies. So I think this would expand um, broadband goals for the area as well because this will this specifically is for Comcast where it will allow uh, high speed internet along that area and offer additional options if there are. So I'm already there. Just as a point just for information for sure. you, they've already done um, Dodge Farm Road. So the portion is left to Scott Hill. Okay. But they need the town approval. So. Yep. So did we get a second? Yes, I second it. All right. Any additional discussion? Uh, those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Amusement permit application for our first congregational church Berlin. Um, and this one, if approved, needs my authorization or authorization for the charity sign, I guess, as well. Yep. Would like to know it's helpful? Yes, thanks, they are. Um, so this is, looks like an outdoor concert, uh, West African drum and dance. They're expecting 200 people yeah. on September 25th with a rain date of the 26th from 3 to 5. And that's at, oh, right here, 1808 Scott Hill Road. Uh, da, da, da. Looks like they have their liability insurance in here included. Uh, and there's a traffic control, one person at Scott Hill entrance, security, two personnel from the church with cell phones. Chief's cool. been notified as well already. Chief has. It's a lot of people. Where are they going to park everybody? They said they were going to make additional parking Set somewhere back. in the back. Yeah. That's what he, said. he had, had told me. That's a, I don't know how you do that. But they're not planning on parking on Scott Hall, are they? He said they're not planning on parking on the way. Okay. I would make a motion to approve the permit application for the outdoor concert. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, ARPA fund usage. What do you got for us, Vince? You got a list right there. Readily available. Some of them are uh, obviously most of the, the price of their estimated costs as well. The one update I can give you is this afternoon I did receive the server uh, upgrade quote from RB Technology as well. I will send that out to, for the board to, to review as well. That came in at a little under 15, 
um, for the server equipment upgrade. Why that says 15 to 20 is the other thing, item for discussion on that upgrade is going from these old desktops that the staff have for most of them to laptops with a, 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 um, a docking, station. docking station. Thank you. Um, so if there is a, a time again that we have to work remotely, it's easy. Um, there's no, there should be no issues. With the ability, everybody's ability to be able to do that and support daily work. Yep. Is there any ability to include the Lovers Lane Bridge in the ARPA funds? I think that's a historical bridge, so we're working on getting the same thing for the Lovers Lane Bridge. Oh, yeah, very I well think Vince said. has an update done uh, on that one. Yeah, uh, they did do an inspection because we wanted to open it at a reduced rate, and the state inspected it and said absolutely no way. Mm -hmm. um, so we're again the, the best that I can do right now with the state is this this coming January complete the paperwork again um, for the process, uh, working with the regional planning commission as well to get it moved up on the priority list to be done. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the bad news, right, is the time involved with that. The good news is, again, it's, uh, it's going to be paid for fully by the, by the state at no cost to, to the town. And we have that confirmed with the state? I, yeah, I have, uh, I have an email saying that, that that is, in fact, the case based good. on that agreement. Good. Now, I thought we were going to look at these culverts out here as well, the potential area. Isn't that the Fisher Road culvert? Fisher Road culvert's on here, and the Richardson Road culvert, I thought, is on here as well. Yeah, yes. there's a top two. So, so and more so, I thought you used culvert or something like that as well. I, I didn't. I, I may miss that, but I didn't. Brad, where's, do you recall if the these culverts right out here, weren't those part of the conversation for potential um, mm -hmm. maintenance or okay. before they fail? They were inspected um, a couple of, I think it was a year or two ago. 26 Last state inspection of the culverts. I have that report. Somebody inspected them last year. Oh, somebody else. There was. Last year. There was some out here. It's still been here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. They were, they were inspected, and the and the fellow said he looked all right. But um, again, I don't know if he's a uh, um, uh, you know he's a scuba diver. I don't know if he's an engineer or not. And um, I don't know how you'd ever. I mean, I don't know who you could ever get to go in there and and, uh, and inspect them. Uh, I don't know if you could block one off and and just have water go through the other one and, and let it dry down enough or pump it out so you can get in there and just uh, take a look at it. I just know I, I thought that was one of the discussion items for the ARPA funds before we ran into an issue with that in the Richardson Road, as I recall. Yeah, the, um, uh, the only thing that we... We commented on the uh, on the culverts is, is that they that we need because of the cost of of Fisher Road, we really needed to take and look at those and see if if that's going to be in the timeline that we're going to, have to fix them. Right. This is before they fail, and we have to put an eighty foot span out here. <laughs> I mean, stop, stop and think if 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 you had to close the crosstown from. Uh, from the town, from uh, um, Ned Road down. I mean, right. So, I think I think we should. I think we should at least consider having some sort of inspection done with the, the funds as well, um, just so that we know. Was it that Richardson Road? Um, do you guys see anything else on here that we want to look at with these extra funds? No, I think for me, I just not knowing some of these projects or some of these things would be good to have a little bit more information. Um, right, I thought we replaced, I thought at one point we did do all of our meters with the, the smart meter technology. And there was discussion about that. I remember, I remember talking, actually I think with Wayne when he was on the board about it. Um, and so. Could someone educate me on why we would pay for the smart meters? Rather than the utility companies, I, I have no idea. The water meters? No, is it the smart meters for water? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the time savings, the billing, um, the accuracy, and we do all of that. 
Yeah, yeah. And it would the it would the, the time and money that we spend, I guess, collecting the uh, information through the billing and, and all that would, would more than efficiency. It pays for itself. I forget what the, what Tom had done. Tom did the work on this one quite some time ago, right? And uh, but, and I forget what the return yeah. was. I think it was like a five year return on investment in staff time. Yeah, payroll. And I agree with the thought to include the inspections. Maybe we could get a cost associated with that mm -hmm. and then get some backup information because, like, if we're going to add on the inspections for uh, perspective wise, you know, and 200,000 is the wetland scoping study, maybe some additional information for various things that are on the list so that we can make a real keen determination. As well as the new town center wetland scoping study, why would that be on there? That wouldn't have been done at this point. Or is that built into the budget somewhere else? Or the, the wetland scoping study? No, that's, yeah. a, that's a new item that came up because the way they were, the way we were progressing through the new town center is project by project. And each one goes through the Act 250 process. Each one goes through its own permitting process. The state came back with a letter to Tom saying, uh, we'd like you to reconsider and do a, an overall study of the wetlands and their use within the new town center as kind of a consolidated packet. This is what it's, it's, it really revolves around. Hmm. Instead of piece by piece, which... So that wasn't in this plan that we put together. It, it was not no. because again the, the, the idea of the plan was we, we don't know who's going to come in for investors and what they're wanting to build how big it's going to be where it's going to go on there right yet right we have we have a plan for the town center as a whole mm -hmm. but we don't know individually that's why it went um, as the applications came in mm -hmm. so we're I mean with the, the Heidenberg or the mall we're still we're saving them a tremendous amount of their, their master permit was up to actually 50 as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it might be worth having a discussion with them about partnering with them on some of these things a little bit more as well, right? And the hospital. I mean, the hospital, yeah, they could help us out a little bit. Um, I'm just not sure, like, the address hospital hill water convey, uh, conveyance, conveyance line. line. Right. Like, what? What is that, or what's the issue? Mm -hmm. I agree. Connect well number four to water distribution system. I don't know what that is either. Okay. They sound great. I yeah. mean, they mm -hmm. sound well, like we just need long backup data. Yeah, no, what I'll do is I'll get more details of what each of these are. I'll, I'll distribute them to them to, to you to the board. <laughs> and then, uh, again, the are you talking? Are you talking about the uh, hospital water system? Wastewater line. Yeah. It says hospital address Hospital Hill Wastewater Conveyance Line. And then there's like Gravity Berlin Corners Wastewater directly to Montpelier. Yeah, that's a, that's, um, that's a, you know, develop wastewater collection for Crosstown Road neighborhood. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on here. I'm just not sure what. Right. It would be good. I, I get it. It would be good to have more of the information, the scope right. of what yeah. each one of those. Absolutely. So we're going to add. These culverts to that list. Yep, I've got a note to add those culverts and then get, get more information on each of the when, projects. Yeah, what was our when do we have to spend some of these? We got, funds? we got time, we got plenty of time. We got, right? we got plenty of time to well, decide. You say that now, we'll be scrambling at the last That's minute true. when the funds need to go out the door, but yeah. um, for now, we're okay. Um, I just want to make sure we get the most bang for our buck, right? So, makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Anything on that? Any additional comment? No, I, I would like to just throw my vote in there for the digitization of records as well. Though. Oh, I think that's a estimate. To, yeah. to be near the top of the list. Okay, well, you'll give us some <laughs> additional detail on that, right? That'll sure. Show how important that is. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Just don't overlook it. That's all I'm asking. Well, I don't think you'll probably let us. Um, CV fiber letter discussion. Yeah, this is an interesting one. I don't know if you had a chance to read the letter or not, but uh, they're basically asking us to give them a, res a response of areas that we would consider uh, locations for them, for their equipment, 
as it's a basically a mandate from the, if the state saying that we have to give them one or more sites for communication plant components within each municipality. You know, like the fire station, like the town office, if it's a, if it's a central spot where they can have equipment. Okay. So it's, it's more of a discussion about where do you think the right spots are? They, 40 by 40. Within town. Yeah, 40 by 40 spot. Doesn't it, doesn't it really matter on where they're starting? I mean, especially in Berlin, right? What if we told them Riverton? Well, this is right? it. That, that's why they're asking. I think that's part of why they're asking is because their engineers are going to look at what we have available and how it fits into where they need to put things. Okay. So we design have, it. Should we have Jeremy? Like, should, shouldn't we have someone from CB Fiber have a discussion with us on it to make that decision? I would think. Yeah, I, I don't know an, I don't enough, know enough about, about it even what the plan is. What? Uh, I know that they're going through design phase now, but I don't know what they're designing, which what parts of the town, what, where are they? Right. They've done studies around around town and yep. surveys, and um, they had a, they must have a good idea of where the most people are that don't have um, an acceptable connection now. Mm -hmm. And maybe it, maybe it's a Riverton area. I, I have no idea, but. That you would help reach us. Reach out to Jeremy and get some more information. Maybe invite him to a meeting. I would invite him to a meeting for a discussion. A discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Because even as he says here, we do not know if each town will require this equipment. So, yep. you know, it'll be worthwhile, it'll be worthwhile to have a discussion and get additional information. But it's great that he provided this for us. Yeah, and I don't know if this was more or less formulated. It's camp yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, So, any discussion? Okay. Uh, Deuce Ditch Tax Stabilization Agreement. Yeah. So, we've got a note on there that gives you the, the summary right on the front cover. Mm -hmm. the, it was approved, it was yeah. in the minutes, but there was no contract ever done uh, between the town and Deuce Ditch. Um, but then again, it was approved. Right. Um, I've reached out to the town attorney, asked him to draft up a contract similar right. to the, the last one that was done by the t with the town as well i have i don't have it back yet okay. um the other question is um if you read the procedure or process it's not completely specific as to when it starts right i was going to say there's no date on no date no and um, and when you when you read the the procedure let's call it it's not clearly defined either um northfield savings bank was at 100 percent completion that doesn't mean the board can't decide from what, what i've read that it can't start earlier. Lucevich is asking, I think he's at either 80 or 90 percent of the estimated completion cost now, and he's asking to start it this year. So that would start his five years if we do it this year. All right, so back me up a little bit. When was it, when was it approved? It was what year? Boy, it was approved in 19, 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, you're doing pretty good though. <laughs> so they oh, there it is. Yeah. So they haven't paid. He got a tax bill this year for the full amount. Okay. He's waiting. I told him it would be on this, this board's meeting and he's just waiting on the board's decision um, to hear back from me. Okay, help me out a little bit further. Did he get a tax bill for twenty? Right, that's what I mean. A full tax bill? Yes. And he paid it? Yes. The full thing? Uh, I, I think 2020. We're in 2021. <coughs> right. That's, because that's, I'm thinking 2021. He got a full tax bill in 2021. I, I don't know on 2020. I'd have to check. In 2021, he did get the full bill. He has not paid it yet. He's waiting on the decision of the board. So we wait until 100% completion for the Northfield Savings Bank. And that was how long, how far into their project? Was that multiple years? Was that one year? How long did their construction take? Uh, I'd have to check again. You see what I'm saying? Um, 
And then can we find out what the tax bill was for last year? Is that something you just asked for, John? Diane. 2020. Yeah, yeah, I can find that. Uh, I'm just curious. Like, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, this this point forward. I guess. Pros and cons. If you look at the pros and cons, it, it's good for him this year. Yeah. It's also good for the town because we're starting we're starting earlier. We'll get to the full value of collecting taxes a year earlier. Yeah, I'm just wondering how Diane budgeted for, Sorry. or how she expected, or what her <clears throat> thoughts were around the collection, and if she had a number in mind, whether it was the number before the build or. On just the land, or you know, is it, if right. this is all new, then it doesn't really matter because it's 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 you know additional revenue. But yep. if if she was banking on a hundred percent, and now we're going back to twenty five, we should just know what that difference was for planning purposes. Yep. And they also offered a more detailed summary to us when the estimate is completed at our request. So okay. that's also in there as an option for us. But I don't. I mean, I don't have any problem with starting it this year, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Yep. I just get some additional information. Okay. We'll need that. We'll need it drafted from our attorney. Um, it is, isn't it? Is that the draft from our attorney in here? No. 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 Okay. This is no. just the application. Um, okay. I don't have the minutes that approved it, but the, the contract was never done. No. Right. Okay. So that's one of the issues. issues. Mm -hmm. Got it. So. So we'll start at yeah, consensus that we, Bless you. Thank when they do write the letter, when we'd like to have it start, obviously, and we have some direction for you this year, right? Okay, I'll get you more information. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give the attorney some I'll give the attorney on how to write it so we can just get it. So it starts this year. Yeah. And then if we have to revise it based on the findings of the additional information. Yeah. Just some stuff. Makes sense. Um, all right. Paving bed approval request. companies two did not bid two bid uh, one of the bidders cannot perform the work this year but that bidder was also not the low bidder so Pike was the low bidder 142401 the, the second bidder uh, but couldn't do the work this year was fresh coat paving at 166050 uh, extreme excavating and Hutchins did not bid okay. move approval of the um, bid results and um, request that we award to Pike at $142,401. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Emerald Ash Moore. I received an email from the Regional Planning Commission that recognized that we had done a report a few years ago. Uh, the town had done a report on the Emerald Ash War. They were reaching out to see if we'd be interested in them uh, helping us to create an ash tree management plan uh, for the town. Since it's a, from a forestry standpoint, it's becoming a big issue. We're, we're starting to be in the red zone of the Emerald Ash War right now. Expanding in town and then setting us on. I I assume that would be something that the conservation committee would do, or no? Um, I don't think so. Sure, I can bring it to the conservation committee. Well, at least ask them if that's something they're interested in doing. I mean, yeah. I got to imagine with our state forest, they would have a big piece of it, anyways. Yeah. Um, or at least you know we're not. Let them start with that. Yeah. Approach the subject it, there. Bring it to yeah. us if they if they want. Yeah. yeah. If they don't have time or can't do it for resource reasons, at least we'll, at least we brought it to them. Makes sense. Okay. Anything else on that? I'm asking for their thoughts on that. All right. Websterville Christian Academy discussion with Mr. Fetcher. Hello. Fetcher is here. Uh, my name is Brian Fetcher. I'm a pastor and uh, head of the school of Websterville Christian Academy. And. Uh, Thought it'd be good. It was advice. They should probably come and talk to you about introducing what we are, what we're doing. Uh, we've recently moved into the uh, Vine Street property at Seventh Day Adventist School and uh, leasing it presently with the intention to purchase it. Um, that's still being worked out, but um, 
I'd also give the opportunity if you wanted to ask questions, come by and see the property, uh, anything else. I'm, I'm here for you for that right now, too. So. The, the school that you were in that's now vacated? No, actually, what has happened is we, we kind of answered the call to the uh, daycare preschool crisis that's in the state. Okay. So we've grown from 15 to almost 80 in that building, which forced us out. And so we leased a, a property over in East Barry last year. Uh, it was with the Roman Catholic Church called Mother Cabrini's. Uh, they've recently sold that, which put us racing uh, since spring, we looked at about six buildings, and uh, and this finally opened up about two weeks before we started school. So that's why we're just getting around to catching up on things. So, mm -hmm. But uh, we've had um, have talked to the state, the agency of education is aware of it. We've had the fire marshal in. People have been working on the water, so we're trying to do everything on the up and up. So good. Is there anything that you need from the town? No, uh, I, honestly, Berlin has a great reputation. We have families that are in our school that are from this, this mm -hmm. town, so that's not an issue. Um, one of the things I, I would, uh, I, I recognize the name, <laughs> but, um, but I would say that um, there has been some talk about uh, sanding and, and plowing, you know, as we, we get to that, but I've, I've heard it's already done pretty regularly, pretty well. Just, Maybe a word out there for that. So. The, the right. one thing that he will need is he, uh, an additional approved wastewater allocation for the increase that, that, that they'll have with the number okay. there from the school. But I think I think um, your the state's working with you to get some some numbers and things as far as right. So we've been, we've been so working with the water engineer on all the other properties, and so uh, we're just waiting on that finalization. One of the things we had to, to do first is uh, the building been vacant for six uh, six years. So as a result, uh, I think it was climate, somebody came in, technologies came in, had to turn everything back on, check all the pipes, make sure everything's working properly. We just had their last visit today, so now we can start to get the final uh, idea of how much water is going to be. You know, we have a well system, so it's really on the wastewater side of things. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, we can certainly, uh, the road foreman was here a minute ago so he, he heard it and he ran yeah that's right <laughs> we'll we'll make sure vince and him um look at the route and make sure that we're we'll be good to have getting to the hill before school starts appreciate it. one of the things that just for your sake too is that um because we get so many people coming from great distances we probably will close school more than stay open but i don't know how that works out for, you know planning and how you do it but um uh you know we're I'm just going to do it and see how it goes for the year. So, mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll leave these in case you'd like to look yes, at the Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's a card. Please do your cane. Thank you very much. It's recorded okay. so far. We've had it recorded so you'd be able to pick right up. All right, next up, we got new cruiser outfitting cost review. Yep, Doc, you got it in your hand that you gave me this. This one we last week. Just looking for approval to move forward with that. Wasn't this what we, you know, when we got ordered the new cruiser, we had already talked to have this discussion with Doc. I didn't remember it. I thought because most of this stuff wasn't going to fit over because it changed everything. And is it our, I mean, this is in his budget. Right? Yeah. He's just looking, again, it's yep. 7,800, so he's looking for approval to move forward. Did he um, go out to bid for this, or is this just going to one place? Is this the lowest bid, I guess, is my question. Good question that I don't know the answer to. Find out. Yes, that would be good. Find out right now. Get them on the phone. Right. Uh, I mean, they're supposed to follow the RFP process. Well, I don't know. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
or if, if you did, if this is the lowest bid? We did not have a bid, but as Diane reminded me, uh, the initial uh, projected cost of the cruiser was for 45 grand. Um, we haven't reached that limit yet. Um, so, so I don't know if the original estimate pushed forward uh, under Wolf um, anticipated that we'd have that additional cost. Fully outfitted costs. That's what I, I, yeah. I believe. But that it's, it's it still not the same procurement. Right. We approved the overall amount, just like right. we approved the overall budget. But right. Um, so is this is glo global public safety? I mean, how many people? I mean, who would you you could put it out to more than these individuals for RFP, right? So, so this is the group that does all of Vermont cruisers, uh, with the exception of state police. Yeah, the state probably has their own people. Yeah. Uh, but I can't say for certainty that Barry has a contract with this company, uh, but I do know they went out of state to do their outfitting as well. Um, so I, no, uh, the answer would be no. I think the agency's going to find whoever works for them. I don't have the policy in front of me, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's whatever's in the best interest of the town right. is what we can, how, what we can do. How, oops. how many uh, companies do he say are in the state that do this work? I think he says there's only one company. How many companies are in the state, Chief, that will do this work? Did you hear the answer, Brad? A little bit. Okay. If 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 there's only one company in the in the state that's doing it, um, I think the policy states that uh, that uh, you can that it's it's up to the select board or the uh, the uh, to uh, take and uh, decide whether to go with it, with it or not. It doesn't necessarily have to go out to bid. We don't know if there's only one company or not. That's, I mean, we don't have clear information. Do you, you see what the name was of the company? Global Public Safety. What's that? Global, Global Public Safety. Ah, oh, I got you. What are your thoughts on that, Bill? I, I think there are probably more companies out there. I think this is who we've probably always used. Um, and, you know, we, we would know by now if there was a real problem with their pricing, I would think, compared to previous years. But there's, in my mind, there's got to be more than one company in Vermont. When you think about the number of cruisers and the number of ambulances and fire trucks across the state, they're not all going out of state. Okay. Um, so, so what? 
it, it comes down to the select board and whether or not you know this is in the best interest of us and whether or not you know we think it's a fair price i think i mean um and I don't, I don't have a problem with the overall overall price i'm always just wondering is it the the, the best price we can get okay so what Brad's our historian as well. well he's <laughs> all our historical data right there. Uh, pretty shady. I mean, it's great to have a long-term relationship with a, a company, especially if the service is exceptional, like you're stating. Um, I think I think what maybe John's concern and the board's concern would be is just having something to, you know, validate the expense associated with it uh, for a comparison. Does that make any sense? Because uh, you don't always have to go with the lowest. Uh, if, if obviously if the, the price is a little bit higher, but you know the quality's there and the relationships there. But I mean, in order for us to make sure it's in the town's best interest, I feel like we should have something else to compare it to, if possible. Is that something we, we can work on? Yeah. Is this a, is this an urgent, so this, this should have been my first question. Is this an urgent need, Chief, in order to get a vehicle on the road? Or are we, how is our fleet right now? And it, can this no, wait just a little bit? We get, we get some time. Okay. okay. So, thank you. That should have been my first question. I apologize. <laughs> so we get a comparison. And I'll put it on. Yeah. Um, next meeting after we have the comparison. That would be good. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. So we'll get a comparison. You have? No, I don't think so. Do you have any questions? All right. Have an excellent evening. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Good night. Good night. Sidewalk agreement approval and signature with Vermont State Employees Credit Union. Yeah. And this looks very similar to the sidewalk agreement we entered with the new town fair tire, right? It's almost identical. Okay. The names have changed to protect them. <laughs> um, doing some work and putting in a sidewalk and this is the agreement. Right in Somebody. there. We had it there. Responsible for the town with respect to its maintenance, repair, and replacement. Yeah. So that was the big one, and the last one I remember was the maintenance agreement. Safety. It probably says in here, and I'm probably just missing it, but then so what happens if they sell the property next year? And I only say that because, you know, with, with all it binding does effect, have it. Binding it does. Mm -hmm. binding binding effect. Effect. Number okay. two under binding yeah. effect. That's why you're here, Justin. Well, Thank flow, you. Flow spotted it first, so yeah. she <laughs> called it. She called it. Not really. <laughs> Thank you. That answers my question. <laughs> we we just prefer to read before we run our mouse. <laughs> Think nothing of it, John. I usually don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I've entertained a motion to approve this. I make a motion to. Approve the sidewalk agreement um, with the VSECU. And I second the motion. All right. Any discussion? All right, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, municipal planning grant 20K with 2K match approval. Can you explain this one, Vince? 
This is um, requesting basically approval to proceed to apply for the grant. It's a, it's a 20K grant with a, a 2K match for the for municipal planning for the town. Um, it was brought to us from uh, Carla at the, at the Planning Commission to, to bring to the board, authorizing us to, to apply for this grant. So where is the planning going on? Department of Housing and Community Development offer grant. Where specifically? I mean, so we've got 2K match right. for a $20,000 grant, and where, where is the plan? Well, that's what I'd be curious about. First question. Just, it's, it's as I understood it, it's a general overall town municipal plan. So, so really, this goes toward, can it go towards staff cost? I probably could, but I think the intent is to hire a consultant to work with the Planning Commission to develop this overall plan. Okay. Is the 2000 budgeted? Not yet. So we don't have the money for it. The 2000. Is it in the Planning Commission's budget? I'd have to validate that. Come back to you on that. I don't know the answer to that question if it's in the. Planning commissions are not. If, if it's not in our budget, maybe it's in you know, the select board budget. Yeah, it, could it be probably one. wasn't. It probably could be in the planning commission. Most budget. likely. It, mm -hmm. it most likely is. And so I'd like to know where where they're planning on coming up with the $2,000. Okay. Nope. Okay. 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 Um, so we should have thought of that ahead of time. Sorry. I'll find out. Keep going on this. Yeah. Any other questions you'd like to and, and I will come back with. If it's there and what the the details of it look mm -hmm. like. Great. Anything else you want us to find out while we're doing this? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, the, the general options for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah right. Not general, just, not just the what does the Planning Commission want to do, but how broad is it? Like, how right. can we, you know, is there more opportunity here than just the Newtown Center, maybe? And, and planning there, or is it for you know a sidewalk plan for the entire town, or a bike path, or can it be used for any of those? Okay. Oh, okay. I got it. Maybe, maybe Mike. I was the chair, right? Yep. And we have her and quickly go talk to the details of it. Yep. All right. RFP for legal services approval. So as as uh, we talked about in the last, I think it was the last meeting, um, our town attorney, right, is. Uh, basically semi-retired. Um, we needed to go out to RFP for a new town attorney. Uh, this is the draft to, to do that. And I'm just looking for your approval to move forward with, the, with this draft and get it out into uh, out into the hands of some uh, firms. Where will we be posting it? Where, where will it be published? I'll, I'll put it in the, in the Argus for a few days. Post it around town. I can put it in the world as well. What about our, you know, we should post it'll be on our, our website. website. We should have a it, RFP yeah, our town site. And, and, well, I mean, everything. I, I feel like with our website, we should have a place for RFPs, whether it's the cruiser, a paving mm -hmm. job, this mm -hmm. service. Also That's out on the Vermont Park 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 for us as well. Oh. I'm glad we're starting that then. So am I. <laughs> I'll, I'll brief you some more on the website as well because we did get an intern. Started with us, you can be interviewed with staff as well. So. Okay. And I would include it on the Vermont Bar Association as well. Vermont well, Bar Association. Yeah, right. Excellent. Good idea. I would move approval of the RFP for legal services. And I second that. And just the last two lines under selection criteria, just indent them a little. Other than that, everything looks good. Yeah. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any discussion? Those in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, approval of uh, license permits, vouchers, and applications. Yes, we can do that. Thanks, Flo. You're welcome. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22-05 for payroll from August 15, 2021 to August 28, 2021. Paid on September 1st, 
of this year in the amount of $45,496.74. Also payroll warrant 22-06 from payroll from August 29th this year to September 11th this year, paid on September 15th, 2021 in the amount of $45,902.89. Payable warrant 22-G04 with checks 21401 to 21455 in the amount of $219,999.17. Also, the August Reconciled Bank Statements for the General Fund and Sewer Water Checking Accounts, August General Journal Entries, and August Budget Status Report, Trial Balance Report, and Delinquent Tax Report. Second. I'll second that. Nice job, Flo. Nice job, John. Uh, right back at you. Mouthful. Any discussion? All right. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Come on, carries. Uh, approval of minutes. Uh, we're going to get the meeting of, for the 27th off from there um, since John and I were absent and we don't have enough yep. for a vote again on that one. Um, so we'll have to save the lows. But June 7th and August 16th, looks like we could probably get an approval on those. I make the motion to approve the Monday, June 7th, 2021, regular select board meeting minutes as presented. Second. Any discussion? Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, actually, I should have said it on there. I see that on here with the Fisher Road culvert update, it says Badowski reported that Chip would you signed the easement agreement. Um, you know, I just won't ask if that would have been handed. Just waiting on the attorney. Town attorney still? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about August 16th? Minutes? I make the motion to approve the Monday, August 16th, 2021 regular select board meeting minutes as presented. Second. Any discussion? Uh, all, right. all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Anything for round table, Brad? No. Hello? No. Vince? Yes. <laughs> um, a couple of things real quick. Mott Leagues and Cities in Town, the Town Fair is coming up August 29th, the voting delegate. I'm going to step out on a limb and assume that you're going to want me to be the voting delegate for that, unless one of you would like to do that. It makes perfect sense <laughs> okay. for you to do that. I'm, I'm only going to attend the one day uh, fair portion of the meeting where the votes will be occurring and stuff. I'm not going to go spend four days there. I'm going to do it remotely, right from I was going to say, so, isn't there virtual? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's virtual and in person this year. But make make sure virtual. you watch the cybersecurity piece. That's very riveting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They had me do a five-minute clip <laughs> for a oh, great conference. Okay. Uh, and then the second one is um, we have some uh, beavers that have decided to move into the park on Muzzy Road. And they're starting to back up into the park area. They built themselves a home down there in the brook. So I'm just looking for the board's uh, approval to move forward with either relocating them or terminating their residency in, in, in location. And probably uh, the last time we did that was a few years ago, and it, we, I think we paid the individual $60 a beaver to either trap them or, and relocate them or to make them go away another way. I believe there's a gentleman in Barrie that does that. Do you have some names and resources already? I, I, I don't. I'm going to okay. start from scratch. I'll probably start with the the, the warden. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, Mr. Brown out of Northfield. Mm -hmm. Have a chat with him and, Absolutely. and get some leads on how to go mm -hmm. with this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But I know there's a reputable individual in Barrie. So, um, I would start, like you said, and get some names and go from there. Okay. And relocate it. Are we okay for... $60 a, a beaver again. Uh, I guess that's my question. I'm just looking for approval to wrap this one up. Moving forward. Okay. Any other 
forward and wrap it up. I don't have any issue. Okay. And I don't know the current going fees, so. I'm sure Mr. Brown pretty, pretty reasonable. Absolutely. If it's, if it's anything substantially more than that, I'll come back to the board before mm -hmm. making any decisions. Mm -hmm. For anything else, Mr. Crosby? Uh, no, but I think you're going to bring this one up. You wanted to talk about this one in this meeting? Yes. So, John? I have nothing for roundtable. Okay. So I asked. Uh, oh, just just actually one thing <laughs> very quickly. Um, Vince, when do you have a date of when we're doing the the um, new speed signs on Brookfield Road? Um, no, but the signs have been ordered. What we're waiting on is the delivery date. Okay. Once we know when we have the signs, okay. um, then we'll make a plan to get them up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. So. The only thing I wanted to start with a discussion was I was curious about some of our properties in town and what participated in the pilot program and what, what didn't. Um, and, and just, you know, who, where, you know, any of these, I don't know if any of these places were, you know, uh, partners in the community in any way, shape, or form. I, and I was looking down through the list. And I, I realized, I think Blue Cross and Blue Shield isn't a pilot program. Don't, aren't they, Brad? Doesn't Blue Cross? I think they need some. I think they, they, usually, they usually send us some, some, some if, funds. If they are, it's voluntary. It's not with the state because the state, what's listed here for the state pilot program came right from the state site. Right, I think it's voluntary. Okay. And so I, I, maybe we could narrow that down a little bit. But sure. I believe Blue Cross Blue Shield gives us 50, maybe 50000 a year. 25 or 50, as I recall. Yeah, you'd have to ask Diane. She would know. Yeah. Um, and then as I look down through it, I mean, I know obviously the town wouldn't make sense, a lot of the churches. Um, and I was, I thought for some reason the Central Vermont Medical Center was on, on there, um, on the state pilot program. And I didn't know, right, which I found shocking, um, especially with the new town center and some of the stuff we have going on and just how, I, I, I don't know. I just wanted to see, I wanted to get this out to the other board members and just see what their thoughts were maybe on some this, of this. This is the first time I've seen this, so I just want to make sure I'm looking at it right. So the estimated property value of state buildings in Berlin, in Berlin is 30.7 million. Yep. Yes. Right? And they give us, in 2021, they're going to give us $134,696. Yes. Okay. Do we have, do we have a formula? Do we know what their formula is? Uh, the, for <laughs> calculating the uh, the pilot cost. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah calculating the payment to us. Yes, they have a formula that they use. It's on the website. I can. Oh, it is. I, yeah, I can. I okay. can get it and send it to you. It's eighty percent of twenty percent of. <laughs> right. And then there's a, a number of other buildings here with um, prices that, you know, a fairly long list um, that adds up to. 78.4 million right of of parcels or, or property value that don't have pilot programs that are associated with the state not associated with the state right. is that correct right. and that don't to, to your knowledge don't have any pilot correct they are not in the pilot program okay. of the state got it i think so they don't pay us anything okay Right. Unless it's voluntary, which I got to check on Blue Cross Blue Shield. Which I, I, I'm not, I believe they do. Um, I don't, and I was looking at this, and if you see the 78 million figure, over half of that is from the Central Vermont Medical Center campus. They have one building at 46 million, one, that one campus, 743, 254, 365. Correct. Yeah. Um, so, Fair to say they have $50 million worth of property that they're not being taxed on in Berlin. Right. Um, so I don't know if, I don't know, I don't know what you guys, what your thought is on that, but, um, and with these other ones, yeah, you know, right now the town is spending a lot of money on infrastructure pieces. Um, you know, I think about the Fisher Road culvert, I think about the town center, all those pieces, especially up here in, in this area. Um, and, you know, and, and a lot of conversation around public-private partnership and not being at 100% of a municipal expense. 
Um, and I get it, nobody would ever want to just voluntarily write checks for a form <laughs> when they're getting, you know, but I don't know if the board would want to look into this further and have discussions, maybe see, see, I mean, I know that, I know that we, some of these, some of these entities that are on here definitely use a lot of our municipal resources. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't know, it might be worth entertaining some conversations and inviting them in and asking them how they'd like to start moving forward. Just as a note to that, I kind of opened the door with the hospital. Oh, you did? Yep. And uh, had some conversations with them. And we've agreed to, you know, talk openly with uh, what we can do to help each other as the town develops in this area, similar mm -hmm. to what you just said. And we're also agreed to have a quarterly meeting uh, with them to have discussions. So that's in place. We had the first one a couple of weeks ago. What was, the, what was the topic? We, we talked a little bit about <laughs> the services that the town provides, like fire, police, and yeah. so on. Um, they didn't talk fondly of the, of the fire department, um, to be very transparent. Uh, the amount of time it takes them to respond, uh, they get a quicker response out of Barry. So they're very open about that. Very, very great to make well, that's it. Distance. They're a full staff. And they're, they're full, full fully staff. I'm not shocked by that. that. No. And I said, there's no surprise there, and we understand that. Um, I said, but we, you know, we, we want to be open and talk about how we can work together, you mm -hmm. know, to, to build the community and build our services and support mm -hmm. you as well. So yep. um, those are the discussions that we're having. So they are open. Uh, they're open to further discussions. Um, they are going to share. When they have it done, I asked them to share their five-year plan with us as well. How does that impact the town? How's that going to impact our services? Um, we, we'd like to know that so we can plan accordingly as well. So they Certainly. weren't ready to share it yet, um, but they, they will. Give you a timeline? No, they, they weren't. They weren't ready to commit to that quite yet. So they are mm -hmm. Okay, but we open up dialogue yeah. and right. start out. Right. The they will schedule quarterly meetings with us right as well going forward. How long was the meeting? Just out of curiosity. Uh, close to an hour. Oh. Right. Who are the representatives from the hospital? I'll get you their names because I okay. wrote them down. Okay. And I'll send them to you. Yeah. Thanks, Vince. Yeah. yeah, and I don't. I mean, I don't know what the board's thoughts are on this, but it was. I just thought it was interesting and something we should definitely. Yeah. I would just expand because you know the the fire department does a lot of really good work in the community, and I don't want them to have a negative reflection off. You know, response right. time. One discussion. Well, with and, the, and the fact that they're. They're responding to a lot of fire alarms that are just fault fire alarms, right? And uh, the amount of people in a volunteer organization that it takes to respond and get up there and leave work each day or, you know, multiple times a day sometimes. Um, those guys do a pretty good job um, and they're well respected around the it's a lot center of Vermont than a, than a And very committed department. department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different. Yeah. It's going to be so. Thank you, John, for saying that. Mm -hmm. Some of these places, I mean, I don't even know what the Institute of Professional Practice Incorporated is. Um, places like that, but I mean, I don't know. They're affiliated with Washington County Mental Health, and is they're that? located up above Blue Cross and Blue Shield on the opposite side, about halfway. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know, you know, maybe some point, you know, the. the even the non, you know, the ones listed under the non-tax parcels. And I see the Berlin Corner Cemeteries on there. I know that they had, they had come to the board a while back asking about, it might have been before John was on the board or Vince was here. I know I was on the board, so you were here, and Brad was obviously here. But, you know, they're, they, they, they now go on every year, and they're uh, one of the extra items that people vote for, but they, they were worried about having some financial issues down the road with funding and maintaining it, as I recall. Um, but it might not hurt to maybe come up with a letter just to send out to all these entities and ask them for a brief explanation of what, what they do for the ones that we don't know. I don't know what kind of services they provide. Just have a better understanding of what, what they do in our community. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. But it would be also good for the town report as well. That's what I'm including saying. Including the information there. Yeah. yeah. This mm -hmm. would be a great page for the town report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just, well, I mean, people, that way people understand, you know, what they're, what they're offsetting as well as what they're paying for. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in a comparison thing, I mean, I, like, I know, like, I, it'd be nice to know, 
the accuracy of it. Like if, if Blue Cross isn't isn't a private, you know, non taxpayer solvent, they're 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 paying a little bit. Um, I guess you know not to pick on Central Vermont Medical Center, but do other hospitals like just what what do other hospitals contribute or right. anything to local communities for comparison yeah. too? What do you know, do, do the, the churches, I mean, I don't, I'm sure the churches probably don't, but do they right. contribute anything? Do they don't get yeah. any donations? Um, but it's hard to say if you don't, like, really know what, what they do. I, I can tell you from my experience in Northfield that the, the churches um, are not a right. um, tax taxpaying they, um, organization, but the Norwich University and the town of Northfield have had a really good relationship for many years and have um, established a pilot program for emergency services specifically. Um, Norwich University has bought a ladder truck for the town as well as uh, given to the pilot um, mm -hmm. year after year after year. So, you know, I think it depends on the organization and how deeply rooted they are in the community and the, I think there's some different things that go into it. But I know in Northfield, um, okay. they, they certainly have... Okay. Um, oh, different sorry. pilots on, on other hospitals and other regions, yeah. municipalities, and what they do yeah. as well. I think that's that's something we could. And we'll we'll keep this kind of a discussion maybe on the agenda. Okay. What do you guys feel about that? Just I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Uh, sorry to take up so much time, but I thought that was important. And thank mm -hmm. you for doing that, Vince. Very much so. Uh, so. I'm going to entertain a motion to uh, enter executive session. And is it contract or is it legal personnel? I said it was contract. Contract? No. Okay. Two items. Contract. And are we expecting any action after? No. I make the motion to exit the regular select board meeting tonight at this time to enter executive session to discuss contract issue.